Good evening to you. Welcome to High School Basketball Action on Central Illinois Sports live tonight from AC Central High School for this matchup between the Porta AC Blue Jays and the Pittsfield Sockies alongside Justin Poor. I'm Charlie Hull. John Hull manning the camera at center court tonight, and this is the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. The Sockies are 14 and 6. The Blue Jays 11 and 10 on the season. The second time these teams have matched up. The last time was in the first week of the season. We'll talk about how these two teams have done as of late and talk about the matchup on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show after this. Are you looking to streamline your banking? Great Rivers Bank has just what you need with our streamlined checking and savings accounts. Earn high interest rates or get cash back on debit card purchases with your qualifying account. Plus, ATM fee refunds. Certain qualifications required. Call or visit our website today at www.greatriversbank.bank to get started. Great Rivers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. At Logan AgriService, we consider it a badge of honor to be recognized as one of the larger independent suppliers of crop protection chemicals in the Midwest. We've worked hard for years to provide you with the access to the best herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides from top manufacturers because we know without you, our local farmers, we wouldn't be here. When you have questions, call our local experts to discuss what works best for your fields in your situation or visit us online at loganag.com. Serving agriculture since 1962. Here at Little Jess, we value hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership. We have a respect for heritage and tradition and believe in the pursuit of building legacies, breaking records, and putting forth award-winning results. That's why supporting schools and local teams is one of our favorite and most exciting parts of our business. For over seven decades, we strive daily to use those same values as a foundation to meet our community's automotive needs and support our future generations. Little Jess Motors, serving our community since 1969. Best Systems Insulators offer insulation for homes and commercial buildings throughout Central Illinois and the surrounding areas. We take great care to ensure that the insulation products we use are the best fit for our clients and their project. We understand that different buildings have different needs and that each of our clients has a unique set of goals. Let us work with you to find the best solution for your next project. Call Best Systems Insulators at 217-285-6005. That's 285-6005. Or visit them online at Go Best Systems. Back with you on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show on Central Illinois Sports. The Sockies and the Blue Jays of Port AC Central matching up this evening when these two teams played on the second game of the season. Pittsfield won the contest in a low-scoring game, 38-24. The Sockies are 14-6 on the season. As of late, they've won back-to-back -back games, 65-45 over Rushville Industry on Saturday and beat Louisiana last Thursday. 51 to 40. That snapped a four game losing streak for the Sockies. They got, uh, well, winter weather ran into a problem for them as they were supposed to play Camp Point Central on Tuesday night. That game has been moved to February the 5th. Pittsfield will also play at home against Jerseyville on Saturday. The JV game in that contest scheduled for 2 30 with the varsity game to follow around 4 o'clock. For the Porta AC Blue Jays, 11 and 10 on the season under first-year head coach Stephen Price. They are coming off of back-to-back -back losses, 48-46 to Illini Central and 52-48 to Athens. So a couple of close contests there. We saw them, of course, play at the Winchester tournament, and uh, they finished in fifth place in that tournament, beating Calhoun 54-47. Uh, other wins in the tournament, 50-42 over North Green, 43-35 over Triopia, and a loss to the eventual champions, West Central, 69-46. This Porta squad, outside of the sophomore in Levi Hoagland and senior Ethan Mahoney, just not a very big squad overall. Their guards a little bit undersized, but a team that plays extremely hard, and I really like the energy they bring to the court and a lot of that is attributed to their head coach and Stephen Price, who kind of demands that from the sideline. The Saki should have a size advantage of the guard positions, and you could see some situations where they might try to get Tom Haven Petty down on the post to take advantage of those matchups. It is the Great Rivers Bank pregame show with locations in Pittsfield, Barry Liberty, and Hannibal Great Rivers Bank is here to serve you with all of your banking needs. Find a location nearest you or online at greatriversbank.bank. Member FDIC, 
and equal housing lender. So we told you Pittsburgh will be back in action on Saturday. That is their annual Take a Charge Against Cancer fundraiser contest. JV game at 2.30, varsity game to follow. Lots of activities to help raise funds for local community members who are fighting cancer. So come out and support what has been a great event for a number of years now. Kudos to Scott Bacon and all the folks who put in a lot of work to make that a successful event. We'll step aside here on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. Back with more at AC Central after this. Kate Marable, real estate broker with Hometown Real Estate, would like to say good luck to all area teams and hopes everyone has a successful and healthy season. When you're in the market for a new home or would like to sell your home, be sure to call Kate Marable. Kate is a lifelong resident of the area and has experience in first-time home buyers, FHA, USDA, and VA loans. Call Kate Marable at 217-370-9809. That's 370-9809 for Kate Marable and Hometown Real Estate. Cedar Lake Campground has been owned and operated by the Cranberg family for over 50 years. Located off of Highway 24 between Coatesburg and Camp Point, Cedar Lake Campground is a quiet family campground that you're sure to enjoy. With 60 RV spots with water and electric and our five-acre lake, it's a perfect spot for a weekend spent fishing, spending time with family, and enjoying the great outdoors. Find out more about Cedar Lake Campground on Facebook or call 217-455-4602. Here in Pittsfield, we're focused on maintaining a healthy, diverse economic base to increase opportunities for our residents. Economic factors greatly affect a community's overall potential, and we strive to continue our prosperous culture. The availability of both commercial and industrial employment centers and new lucrative entrepreneurship opportunities are major assets for growth and development here in Pittsfield. In addition to providing employment and income to people, Pittsfield also boasts several tax incentive districts to further facilitate economic growth. Examples of growth and success can be seen throughout Pittsfield. Pittsfield is located within Pike County and widely known for the abundance of white-tailed deer and is also home to companies that have capitalized from the region's natural resources. Located over on Madison Street, Whitetail Properties is a major local and international employer that truly embodies the local and economic spirit of Pittsfield. State-of-the-art communications and telecommuting are available here. Be sure to catch their televised series throughout the week on the Sportsman Channel. Come grow and be a part of something great in Pittsfield, Illinois. The thing for me that really separates DOT, senior leadership and the owners of the business really focus on employee engagement. We have some of the best people managers. The Tracy family, senior leaders throughout the business, really all of our leaders care about the employees that work here. And that allows for a lot of families to come work at DOT Foods and I think that's part of it is being able to have all those different schedules and the flexibility to be able to move things around when life happens. Make your dream kitchen and bath a reality with help from Pike County Lumber. We'll create a design to fit your lifestyle and your needs. Quartz countertops, quality onyx that offers dozens of colors. From start to finish, trust the knowledge and experience at Pike County Lumber. Loading the kids in the car, brokering peace in the back seat, mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple so you can worry about more important things like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Contact your local auto owners agents at BNP Insurance Agency, Barber Agency. See Pat Vandevelde, Caleb Vandevelde, or Mary Colfus. They'll find our location at 114 South Madison Street in Pittsfield. Welcome back on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show on Central Illinois Sports. The Sockies and the Blue Jays matching up in this contest. This uh, Florida squad, we've seen them really evolve. We've seen Griffin McClure really become a nice scorer for this team. When they played at the Pittsfield tournament, it was more Drew Marr than anyone else, but uh, Griffin McClure really has become a solid, solid scorer for them, and he and Marr complement each other very well. We saw uh, Levi Hoagland have a good tournament at Winchester. Really saw some good play off the bench from Clayton Hoke, the 6'3 sophomore as well. And uh, so this is a team that is very, very young. Really overall just a couple of seniors left on the roster at this point in time. So kind of building for the future. 
is Coach Stephen Price. And if you can have your down years be a 15-16 win year, that's a pretty good pretty good uh, sign for things to come for this Porta AC Central squad. For Pittsfield, big win against Rushville on Saturday. But back-to-back -back wins together to the Sockies for the first time in the calendar year. And big for them as they've got some tough games coming up down the stretch here. As we told you, that Camp Point Central game got rescheduled to February the 5th, which will be a, a big matchup for the Sockies. Also, um, they still have Payson Seymour, Beardstown still coming up. Jerseyville, of course, uh, a good... Uh, up-and-coming Calhoun squad, and then Liberty, the final game of the season, a Liberty team that just beat Route earlier this week, and so that team really trending upward as well. We'll pause for a break on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show, about three and a half minutes away from the Star Spangled Banner, the starting lineups and the play-by-play. -play. Hope you'll stay tuned on Central Illinois Sports. Griffin Signs in Time at 122 South 9th Street in Quincy is a full-service sign company that can complete any project from fully wrapping your entire fleet of vehicles, digital signs, storefronts, to creating small banners and signs. The right and professional signage is the difference of getting the job, heading folks in the correct direction to find you, or creating a brand recognition for potential customers. Put the right signs in your customer's mind with Griffin Signs in Time. Call 217-228-7470. Are you short on time or budget, but your family is hungry? It's time for the Maya Authentic Mexican Restaurant in Pittsfield. Try the Maya Special, a crowd favorite. Delicious grilled fajitas, steaks, nachos Mexicano, salads in the tortilla bowl, the tastiest salsa and cheese sauce around, and the fastest service anywhere. You can afford it. It's the Maya Mexican Restaurant on Washington Street. Call ahead with your order and you can pick it up in the drive through 217-285-4526. The Maya Restaurant. Restaurant in Pittsfield. For nearly 40 years, the Niebuhr Funeral Home has been serving our area with professionalism and compassion. This is our business, our hometown. You can be assured we take great personal pride in serving your family in your time of loss. We're locally owned. We're your friends and neighbors. We care about you and your family. Niebuhr Funeral Home, with locations in Pittsfield and Barrie, serving our community with compassion and respect. The Liquor Booth is your home for a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits. The Liquor Booth has two locations in Quincy, 3520 Broadway and 1500 North 12th Street. The Liquor Booth, where it's always happy hour. Back on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show to AC Central High School, Port and AC Central. They've been in a co-op for quite a while now on a lot of different things. And I think basketball is one of the final things, but it's been going on for a uh, well, day or two at this point. They play some of these closer games for the teams to the west here at AC Central High School, so glad you're with us here tonight. We'll step aside and hear the national anthem from the United States Army Band and Choir when we come back. The Fire and Omen Supply starting lineups on Central Illinois Sports. <laughs>
All right, during the winter months, the birds really need your help. And to help with that, we have a sale for the birds, literally, during our sale happening now through January 29th. Pick up a bag of 40-pound black oil sunflower seed for only $17.99. Get a 40-pound bag of our best-selling and store brand wild bird mix for only $16.99. A 10-pack of suet plus cakes are under 10 bucks, And all in-stock bird feeders are 20% off. And for our feathered and furrier friends, get an 8-pound package of ear corn for only $5.99. Find all these deals and a lot more right now at farmandhomesupply.com. Time to take a look at the starting lineups presented by Farm and Home Supply on Central Illinois Sports. The visiting team, the Pittsfield Sockies, 14 and 6 on the season. They'll start at a guard, a 5'10 sophomore, Hayden Gratton. At a second guard, the 6'3 senior, Brennan Tomhave. And at the third guard, the 6'1 senior, Javen Petty. Out of forward, a 6'3 senior, Connor Allen. And at the other four, the 6'3 senior, Eli Mendedal. Mendedal, Allen, Petty, Tom Ave, and Gratton for the Pittsfield Sockies. For the Porta AC Central Blue Jays, Stephen Price, their head coach, 11 and 10 on the season. They'll start at a guard, a 5'9 junior, Griffin McClure. At a second guard, a 5'10 junior, Drew Marr. At the third guard, he is a 5'9 sophomore, Jet Carrick. Out of forward, a 6'3 sophomore, Levi Hoagland. And at the other forward, a 6'3 senior, Ethan Mahoney. Mahoney, Hoagland, Carrick, Marr, and McClure for the Porta AC Blue Jays. Porter will be in the home white uniforms with the blue numbers and checkerboard trim. The Sockies are wearing their black uniforms tonight with the red numbers and white trim. Alongside Justin Poor, I'm Charlie Hall. John Manning, our camera at midcourt tonight. We thank him for his efforts as well. Allen will jump for Pittsfield against Hoagland of Porter AC Central as we're ready for action here from AC Central High School on Central Illinois Sports. And the tip is up and controlled by the Blue Jays to start this contest. They'll head away from us as we're on the stage end of this gymnasium. AC Central Knights, of course, from years gone by. Man, what a program they had, especially in those 90s years. Just a tough, tough outfit. Here's Marr on the dribble drive, kicks to the wing. McClure, good luck three, rattles in and out, no good. Allen secures the board for the Sockies. Outlet pass to Tom Haven. He'll bring it into the front court. Both teams start the night in a man-to-man -man defense. Out top, now Gratton gets it. Over to Mendenhall. He's going to try to throw the pass down low through it. Too high for Petty. And the turnover for the Sockies is their first of the night. Petty was matched up on the smaller man in McClure. But the pass from Mendenhall was too high. What do you mean too high? Here's a dribble drive in by Hoagland. Gets caught on the baseline. Reach around pass to McClure. He'll put it up and in for two. Griffin McClure with the first two. And the Blue Jays lead 2-0 on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard. Left side with it is Gratton now out top to Allen. Looks in the post. Now Mendenhall out top. Dribbles toward the wing. Gratton with it. Tries to lob down low. Turnover the second and as many trips down the floor by the Sockies as Hoagland took it away. McClure brings it across. To Marr, now left side, Carrick. Carrick and Hoagland, just sophomores, and the JV team won by a bunch, and they didn't play. So I'm telling you, this program really trending the right direction for Stephen Price and company. 6.30 to play in the first. Ball comes all the way near the half-court line to Marr. He'll try the spin move against Gratton. Gets caught in the lane. He's to get out of there. Pass on the baseline now, Mahoney to McClure. Tries the lob pass down low. Knocked away by Tom Have. On the help side defense. Not a lot of room on that end of the court on the baseline. No, cheerleaders' toes are pretty much on the baseline there. Yeah, there's just, you don't want to run into the wall. That's why there's extra padding all the way up and down that side. Because uh, it'll stop you in a hurry. Here's a drive by Carrick, denied by Allen. Out top now gets the ball to Mahoney. They'll work the screen now for Marr. Marr tries the drive in, stops on a dime, little up and under move, and can't get it to go. Allen secures his second board. Gets it to Petty into the front court. Tomme, Pittsfield still looking for their first points of the game, trying not to turn it over. Out front with it, Allen. Works it over to Petty. Back to Allen. Allen with a shot fake to Petty, top of the key. Now Gratton to Allen. Allen fakes the three-point shot. 5.44 to play in the first. He'll stop in the lane. Shot up no good. Fouled, the official tells us. And this one will be called on Hoagland. Hoagland whistled for his first and the first team foul. And Connor Allen to the free throw line to shoot two shots. Allen, the senior for the Sockies. His first one is up and good. 
could tie the game for the first time tonight. Illini Express, hey, they held their ribbon cutting today, and they're now open on the campus of Illini Community Hospital, 640 West Washington Street in Pittsfield. Learn more about their services at IlliniHospital.org. Allen makes them both. Taylor Graham, the sophomore, into the game. He'll sit down Gratton in a 2-2 contest now with 5.42 to play in the opening quarter. McClure has it in the backcourt. He'll let everybody clear out and bring it up against Tom Hay. Now Petty comes at him with a double-team look. Works it across to Carrick. Carrick knifes inside. Little runner-up right hand won't fall. Rebound loose and fought for, and Connor Allen already has his third defensive board. Allen pass to Tom Haven into the front court. Pass on the wing comes to Allen. Around the left side, now Graham with his first touch of the night. Petty. Allen gets it. Allen's been more aggressive offensively here as of late. Here's Tom Hay for a three. It's off the mark. And the rebound down to Hoagland. Here come the Jays trying to retake the lead in this 2-2 game. 5-0-3 to play in the first. Marr on the bounce against Tom Hay. He'll throw a pass. Was looking for Carrick. Carrick had already cut toward the basket, so that goes out of bounds. And a turnover on Porta is their first of the evening. Both teams trying to get uh, settled in here on the offensive side. It was a 38-24 game the last time they matched up, so don't expect it to be too high scoring. They both like to make it to at least 40, though, let's be honest, right? <laughs> Here's Petty, looks to the wing. Tom Have open three, it's too long now, and the rebound down to Carrick. Carrick works the ball to McClure. Across against the Pittsfield man-to-man defense. It's a free throw line, Mahoney. Looks for the ball handoff. Now, back door finds Carrick. On the baseline to Hoagland. He'll drive in off the side of the backboard. No good. And another Connor Allen rebound. Already his fourth. He's racking them up in a hurry. There have been rebounds to be had in this game. Now, Petty called for a travel out front. And already Pittsfield's third turnover. Here's Ethan Gratton and Hayden Gratton back into the game. And they'll sit Petty and Mendenhall to the bench. 4-13 to play in the first. Ball to bounce to the Blue Jays. They scored on their, well, their early possessions. Pittsfield got the response, and about the last two minutes have been scoreless. But well, not for long. Here's Hoagland on a runner up and in for two. And Porta retakes the advantage 4-2. to two. Tom Abe with the basketball. To Allen as they run the... Flex offense. Free throw line. Here's Ethan Gratton on a shot. No good. Rebound to Hayden Gratton, though, on the offensive side. Now to Graham with the free throw line. His shot is dialed in and knocked down. And the game is now tied at four points apiece. 3.33 to play in the first. Into the front court. Carrick. Chet Carrick had been coming off the bench for this Porta squad. Has worked his way into the starting lineup. Very quick young man, not very big. The guards for Porta aren't very big, but they all have good quickness. Here's Carrick now, dialing from distance, no good, and guess who has the rebound? Connor Allen, trying to set a record tonight. To Gratton, kicks to the wing, to Allen. Allen on the jump stop drive, ball stripped, stolen away by McClure. McClure on the takeaway, he's full speed ahead into the front court. His runner up is good, and he's fouled, and McClure will go to the free throw line, trying to complete the old fashioned three point play. Foul on Hayden Gratton. Here's his first team first against Pittsfield on a nice takeaway and a score here for Griffin McClure, as you'll see on the Northwestern Mutual Instant Replay. Thanks to Sheila Davidsmeyer and her team in Pittsfield for sponsoring our instant replay on Central Illinois Sports. McClure trying to give the Blue Jays their largest lead of the ball game with just a tick under three minutes to play in the first, and his free throw is no good, and the rebound down to Graham. Just because Allen sat to the bench, though, he would have had that rebound had he been in the game. Minden all in. He gets the pass from Lucas Nichols, who's fresh out of the game. Tom Hay for a three, top of the key, knocks it down, and gives Pittsfield their first advantage of this contest, 7-6 to six on the first lead change of the game. McClure across the half-court line. He's become a really, really solid player throughout the season for this Blue Jays team. Here's Hoagland to Marr. And that's really helped open some things up for Marr. And, you know, it's taken away some of the shots he was putting up early, but now he gets a lot of quality looks, not just looks. 
Here's a drive by Hoagland. Good drive. It's got too far underneath. Shot no good. Gets his own rebound, though, and he'll put it back up and in. Pittsfield didn't box out, and Hoagland got the offensive board and put back and gives the Blue Jays the lead, 8-7, with two minutes to play in the first on the PCRE scoreboard. Nichols with it on the left side. Top of the key now, Hayden Gratton to Mendenhall. Works it back on that left wing. That's to Graham. Looking at the post now, Mendenhall going to go to work against Mahoney. Shot fake and a score as Mendenhall's got his first basket in the lead back to Pittsfield on the third lead change here. And now a near steal on the backcourt if Gratton can't secure it. Could not do so, though, as he loses his footing. He is all right. Petty into the game. Also, Allen returns. Nichols and Graham sit down. So no turnover there by Portez. Granton could not secure it, but did get the ball deflection to put it back out of bounds. Carrick in the backcourt finds Marr. 1.30 to play in the first. Dribbles out of the double team. Over the top to McClure. He'll fire away from the three-point line. No good. Rebound to Mendenhall. To Tom Haven to the front court. Pittsfield trying to shoot for their biggest lead of the game. Inside, Mendenhall shot low roll through, but he's fouled. And he'll head to the free throw line to shoot a pair. For Porter, this foul whistled on Drew Marr. It's Marr's first and the second team foul. And Mendenhall to the stripe for the first time in this contest, looking to add on to Pittsfield's 9-8 lead. His first is up and good for the senior Mendenhall. Bowler's Universe open Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Fridays until midnight. Saturdays, 4 to midnight. Check them out at Bowler's Universe with their great menu and always a fun time for you and your friends. Bowler's Universe in Pittsfield. Second one also good by Mendenhall. Tom Hay will sit down. And back into the game is Graham for the Sockeys. 115 to play in the first. It's 11-8 Pittsfield. Inbounds pass. Carrick controls. He'll work it quickly into the front court. Bounce pass down to Mahoney. Got two guys off of their feet on the shot bank and puts it up and in for his first basket. Cuts the Pittsfield lead to one with a minute to play in the first. Grat on top of the key. He'll fire a three. It's no good. Rebound down to Mahoney. He aggressively went after that board, but he'll be called for traveling as they'll say he lost his footing here. So a board for Mahoney, but then whistled for the travel. So a turnover for the Jays. 54 seconds to play in the first. Petty to inbound. Right in front of the stage into this gymnasium. Gets it into Allen. Petty in the corner. Four and three. No good. Three has not been the friend for the Sockies, but rebounds for Connor Allen have been a plenty. Give him a six pack. Six rebounds, and now they'll call a foul out front against one of the Blue Jays. And let's see who this is against. It'll be Marr again, it appears. Where is it, Carrick? Let's see. It is Marr. It's his second and the team third, so he'll head to the bench. Has Brady Kinney into the game for the first time. The senior for this squad, 5'11". So a big foul in the last few moments of this first quarter against the Blue Jays. Tom Habe to Allen. Allen on the dribble drive inside. Jump stop. Got the man off of his feet, but they call him for a trap. And a turnover on the Sockies is there, what, fifth? Uh, sixth. Call it sixth even. And a two for a dollar special. 35 seconds to play in the third. Ball in the backcourt as McClure looks to bring it up. Gives it up to Carrick. Carrick trying to get the ball to the center of the floor and does. Over to Kinney. Out top now to McClure with 20 ticks. Blue Jays trying to beat the buzzer and retake the lead here in the waning moments of this first quarter. McClure still with it now. He'll set this play in motion with 10. To Mahoney at the elbow. Turns and faces. Use the dribble. McClure. Looking in the paint for Hoagland. Had trouble with the catch. Gets the shot up, though. No good. Fouled with two seconds to play in the period and heads to the free throw line to shoot two. Official comes to the center and tells us that fouls against Brendan Tomave. His first team second and Hoagland to shoot two shots. Could tie and take the lead for his squad. First one up by the sophomore is no good. The Pike County Express is your local family-owned newspaper. They've been serving Pike County since 1991. Check them out each Wednesday on a newsstand near you. Second one on the way by Hoagland is good and ties the game up at 11. 
Inbounds pass comes to Allen. He'll take a dribble on a half-court shot. It's good if it goes, and it goes. Connor Allen hits the half-court shot to beat the buzzer and gives the Sockies a 14-11 lead. After a quarter of action from AC Central, it's Pittsfield on this half-court buzzer beater by Connor Allen on top of the Blue Jays by three. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You've heard that phrase many times in Rod Prentice in Pittsfield. Your State Farm agent is the guy you can count on to be your friend and neighbor in the insurance business. He has a complete line of insurance available for you from State Farm Insurance. You can reach him at 217-285-6930. Our family trusts Rod Prentice with all of our insurance needs. Stop by their office on Washington Street and see the girls in Rod Prentice, your State Farm agent, 217-285-6930. I'm Chris Nichols with PCRE Real Estate and Auction here in Pittsfield. For 15 years now, I've been specializing in selling farmland and hunting properties along with homes and commercial real estate. Whether it's helping a seller get a premium price out of their home or assisting a buyer to find the farm of their dreams, I pride myself on providing elite customer service. Give me a call today at 217-473-3777 if I can help with any of your real estate needs. Or feel free to jump on our website at pcrerealestate.com. After a quarter, it's Pittsfield 14. 11 for the Port AC Blue Jays on a half-court made shot by Connor Allen to beat the buzzer in the first quarter. And Pittsfield starts the second period with the basketball in their possession. Allen with it out front. Looks to Petty, top of the key. Sockies, that was their second made three-pointer of the night. Maybe they just need to scoop back some. Been too close this yeah, whole time. Way too close. I'm gonna get back here and Caitlin Clark here. Let's go from the cheap seats. Here's Mendenhall. Shot up is going to be called a travel. Huh. Turnover on the Sockies is their seventh here. Mendenhall strongly disagrees. He did not agree. But the referee says, I have the whistle, so you will listen to every word I have to say. That's right. Into the front court, Carrick with it for the Blue Jays. Hoke has checked in for the first time. Clayton Hoke, the 6'3 sophomore. It's he, Hoagland, Kenny, Carrick, and McClure. As they'll get it to Hoagland, his shot blocked, and the rebound down to Tom Hay. Here come the Sockies into the front court. Ball on the wing goes to Grant. Now Top Petty gets a touch. Just underway here in period number two to Allen on the right wing. He'll try the dribble drive in. Got away with steps. Gets it on the wing to Gratton for a three rims in and out. No good. And the rebound pulled in by Carrick. Carrick across for the Blue Jays. Trying to cut it closer here. Could tie it with a three. Cut it to one with a two-pointer. Carrick says, let's try to tie. Missed it off the rim this time. And the rebound down to Hayden Gratton for the Sockies. Allen with a good first quarter for Pittsfield. That half-court shot and, what, six or seven rebounds, too. Yeah, six rebounds and five points. Working on the double-double here. Tom Abe on the left wing, out top to Petty. Pittsfield has not been able to expose the height advantage at the guard spot so far. Now they'll work the ball into Mendenhall. Allen at the free throw line. Good luck, and he'll knock it down. His seventh point of the night to make it a five-point Saki lead, their biggest of this contest on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard. Into the front court, here's McClure. He'll drive inside, bounce pass down to Hoke. Good find. Hoke can't get it to roll, but is fouled, and he'll head to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Saki's pretty slow afoot on the defensive side, and this one called on Tom Have. Tom Have will pick up his second, and the team first of the second period. He'll take a chair here in a moment as Clayton Hoke goes to the free throw line to shoot two shots. Hoke, the sophomore, played well in the preliminary contest. His first is up and good. Here's Graham back in for Pittsfield as Tom Ape sits down. Damon Emmerich at Great Rivers Bank is here to help you with your next auto residential or commercial loan. Give Damon a call, 217-285-4404. On the other side, Barrett Morse is in for the first time, a six-foot junior for Porta. He'll sit Hoagland to the bench. Second free throw on the way is also good by Hoke. And makes this a three-point contest. 16-13. Two minutes gone in this second period. Granton with it. That's Hayden Granton, the sophomore. To Petty. Now Allen, right side, it goes to Granton. 
Hawkins. We're looking for some flow on the offensive side. Mendenhall gets it out front. Now Graham looking in the post. Nothing there. Back out top to Petty. Right side with a Grant to Graham out front. Trying to get Mendenhall open, but Hope doing a nice job running the post. Right at this moment. Out top now Mendenhall. Sporting a little bit more of a beard than I ever remember him having. He'll work it on the left side now to Graham. Allen now gets a touch. 5.15 to play in the half. Pittsfield's taking about 50 seconds off the clock here. It's trying to look more like Noah. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to have that beard to look more like his older brother. On the left side, Petty. Lob pass into Allen. Too far and out of bounds in a turnover on the Sockies. So a minute or so off the clock, but no points to show for it in Porta with a good defensive effort to shut Pittsfield out there. Into the front court, McClure with the basketball. He's out of a double team to Kenny. Kenny back to McClure with 447 to play in the half. Blue Jays trying to cut it closer. Hoke with it on the wing. He picks up the dribble, looks back door wide open was McClure as he went back door on Petty and two points and in for Griffin McClure. Makes this a one point contest. This Blue Jay team much improved from the time these two teams played early in the season. Now Mendenhall gets it down low, missed the shot, gets it back, gets it to go, and he'll have a chance of the old fashioned three point play. Mendenhall fouled on the play by McClure. McClure's first, team first, and we'll get a timeout. An Adams Network timeout, 423 to play in the half. It's 18 15, Pittsfield on top of Porta. For fast, reliable internet that doesn't buffer, no matter what throw, light throws at you, it's Adams Fiber. 217-214-2345 for Adams Fiber. And or visit followthefiber.net. Timeout was taken by the Blue Jays. They're first, and Mendenhall to the free throw line, trying to complete a three-point play, and he does. Three for three on the night. It's a 19-14. Nichols back in. Mindenall sits down. The Spitzfield trying to set up their defensive pressure here. Mindenall's got seven points on the night. Spitzfield's led by as many as five in this contest. We've been tied three times and have also had three lead changes. Here's a steal now as Petty gets the takeaway. He'll work it into Graham, who's open underneath, then in for two. Good find by Petty. And good finish by Graham. And Pittsfield now has tied their largest lead, this six-point advantage, halfway home in period number two. A little 1-3-1 look defensively for the Sockets. Here's a drive-in by McClure. Lost his footing. Kicks to Kenny on the wing for a three. No good. Rebound is loose, and they'll call a foul on one of the Sockies. I believe that'll be against Petty. Petty will pick up the foul as he kind of swatted it out of the hands of the man. It's his first and the team's second. And the Blue Jays will have the ball underneath their own hoop. Poor Slick over there in that corner. Petty fell down over there a while ago, too. You kind of wonder if there's not some moisture maybe coming from the ceiling with the change in temperatures. Happens in older gymnasiums. That's where everybody's walking in, too. Very true. Yeah. A lot of foot traffic. Here's a deep three just inside the volleyball Ooh. line. And Griffin McClure from way downtown cuts this to a three-point game. 21-18. Give him nine. That was deep. Here's Graham has picked up the dribble. Hot top to Petty. Over to Nichols on the right side. Nichols the senior to Graham who knifes in. Kicks to Petty. Petty with a dribble drive to the free throw line. Back out to Graham. Graham going to spot up trying the answer no good. And Kenny grabs the board for the Blue Jays. He'll work it to McClure. McClure across again. Porter with a chance to tie with a three. Cut it to one of the two. McClure drives in. Blocked out of bounds by Graham. 
and it'll stay with the Blue Jays on the baseline. Tom Ave coming back in for Pittsfield with two fouls. On the other side, the Blue Jays return Hoagland and Mahoney to the game. Hoke sits down along with Kenny. Also for Pittsfield, Eli Mindenall, and we'll see Ethan Gratton in as Pittsfield goes with a little bigger look as Allen sits down, as does Nichols. Two minutes 50, I think that's a one. Kind of blocked by that wind tunnel. Here's Carrick at the free throw line. Pass on the wing, that's to McClurry. Better get a hand in his face if you're the Sockies. He is not afraid to put it up. Now he has a ball down low that's kicked by one of the defenders. Here's Connor Allen back in after a six second break and he'll replace Ethan Gratton. Quick breather, splash of water, get back in there, son. We need rebounds. Yeah, he's got a bunch of them and has been one of their better offensive players as well. Here's a tough pass that Carrick has to pick up off of the shoe tops out front. He'll work against Graham. A couple of sophomores against one another there. Now to Morse on the left side. He'll pull it back out. 224 to play in the half. Pass on the paint is to Mahoney. He's out of a double team, trying to get up with it. Turnaround shot, tough one, no good. And guess who gets the rebound? Connor Allen. Seven. Graham into the front court to Tommy. About top Petty. Rips and drives. Kicks to Allen. Allen on the jump shot, blocked by Hoagland, but for the second time, and what I thought looked to be a good block, well, he gets called for a foul, which will be his second. That's pretty clean. Who's that on? Clear? Hoagland. Hoagland. Hoagland's second and the team's second. And Allen to the free throw line to shoot two for the Sockies. They lead by three and now make it four as the first one is good. Real men twine located just north of Pittsfield. You'll find them right across from the airport, and you'll find them with for their great selection of Concrete lawn ornaments, statues, fountains, benches, and much, much more. Stop by and see them or call 217-285-5013. Pittsfield shooting it at a high rate from the free throw line in this contest. And they take a five-point lead on the two free throw makes by Connor Allen. Back to a five-point game. Here's Kenny in the backcourt. Looks toward the sideline, finds Mahoney. Now to McClure. Works off of the Mahoney screen. McClure gets it back out top. Pittsfield is trying to rotate, and McClure knocks down another ball. He, another deep ball. He's got 12. And it makes it 23-21 with 1.39 to play in the half. Allen with it on the right side. Trying to direct some traffic. That ball nearly stolen away. Kept alive, and Mendenhall has it out front to Gratton. Over to Graham, who hasn't hit him right in the face, just wasn't ready for it. And a turnover on Pittsfield. And the front court, Carrick shot no good, but he's fouled, and he'll shoot two shots. Foul on Taylor Graham. Yeah, Graham, I mean, he got the ball right in the face. I don't think he was exactly looking for that one to come to him. He was not, and uh, was very surprising as the foul... It's the third on the Sockies. First one up by Carrick is good, and he has a chance to tie the game. Graham sits down as Tom Have is back in for the Sockies with a minute 18 to play in this first half. Second one on the way by the sophomore Carrick is no good. Pittsfield's lead remains at one. Tom Have brings it across for the Sockies. 23-22, Pittsfield on top. Back door down low. Gratton misses it, gets it back, puts it up, swatted away. Rebound down to Mahoney. Couple of close shots. Pittsfield could not capitalize, and the Jays with a chance to retake the lead. Had three lead changes, and now make it four as McClure with the left hand runner up and in. He's got 14 in the first half and makes it 24 23. Blue Jays. Petty with the basketball right wing. That's out Mendenhall, around to Tom Hay. Down low, there's Allen, lets two men go by, misses the layup, gets it back, tries to go up with a tough fadeaway shot and gets it to go and gives Pittsfield the lead right back. 25-24, 25 seconds to play in the half and the Blue Jays will hold for a final shot, says their head coach Stephen Price. 15 seconds. Still with it is McClure against Petty. Works to Carrick left side. Carrick on the dribble drive has picked it up. Out top Kenny to McClure for the three and the lead. It's an air ball. Rebound saved in. Hits off of Allen and he'll hold it. 
And we head to halftime in the Little Jess Motors Halftime Show where Pittsfield leads Porta 25-24 at the break. Halftime stats and more your way after this. Today's halftime show is brought to you by Little Jess Motor Company in Quincy, Illinois. We'd like to introduce you to the brand new 2024 Dodge Hornet GT all-wheel drive offered at 32325. The 2024 Dodge Hornet pays homage to the iconic legacy of Dodge performance. The Hornet GT comes equipped with a 2.0 Hurricane 4 turbo engine that boasts up to 268 horsepower, making it the most powerful compact utility vehicle on the market. Stop by Little Jess today and take this eye-catching CUV powerhouse for a spin. From bag to field to bin, Prairieland FS is your home for quality seed. We treat it right here at one of our local facilities, deliver it right to your farm, and then provide the propane to fuel your bins. Have confidence in what you're putting in your engine with our energy specialist. They're focused on maximizing power, fuel efficiency, and engine protection to keep you going. We're neighbors serving neighbors. Prairieland FS, your leading supplier of choice. At Farmer State Bank, we believe in community, teamwork, and success. We're thrilled to announce that we've been named the best place to work in Illinois and the best community bank in America this year. Join us on this winning team where your dreams take center court at Farmer State Bank. We're a team. Discover the difference. The best place to bank, the best place to work. Because when our community wins, we all win. Where community, excellence, and opportunity come together. Farmer State Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. At Full Throttle Parts, we do spray on bed liners, a brand called Patriot Liner. It is very elite. It actually enhances the resale value of anything you put it on, on or off road. Go Full Throttle! Go Full Throttle. It's time to be thinking about tax planning. You can count on Illinois FBFM for accounting, consulting, and tax preparation for farmers and businesses in Pike, Brown, and Adams Counties. Call 217 217- 593-7233. That's 593-7233. Illinois FBFM can take care of your farm accounting needs. Get your accounts in order for this tax season. Contact Jesse Schumann and Emily Matthews at Illinois FBFM in Camp Point. Working for you. Pressures on you would like to wish all the area teams the best of luck this year. If you're looking to get your team shirts or just looking for spirit wear for yourself, remember Pressures on you. We have over 1,400 square foot of retail space in our shop. Stop by and see us and check out our offerings. Business lets us help you promote your brand. Decoration methods we offer include screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving. Thank you to everyone in our community for the support over the last 16 years. Thank you for supporting local. Pressures on you, 506 Westwood. Camp Point, Illinois. Back at the little Jess Motors halftime show. It's a 25-24 Pittsfield lead at the halftime break over the Porta AC Blue Jays here at AC Central High School. Halftime stats brought to you in part by Pike County Concrete. When you need concrete for your next job or project, give Pike County Concrete a call. 217-285-5548 with locations in Pittsfield and Jacksonville with some of your halftime stats. Here's Justin Poor. Start with Porta Blue Jays. Uh, Played a pretty clean first half, only three turnovers. Um, had five fouls. Saki's had uh, nine turnovers in the first half and uh, and five fouls. Uh, with uh, only Tom Have having two, we had five lead changes and three ties. Close. Half. A close contest throughout. I think Marr, the only guy for Porta with two fouls yes. on their side. Uh, so no, Ma- and Hoagland. Hoagland. Oh, excuse me. I lied to you. So they have two guys with two fouls, but nobody with three. And that'll be big for both of these teams as they head into the second half. We'll have a look at team shooting statistics and individual scoring and rebounding on the Little Jess Motors halftime show next on Central Illinois Sports. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville with locations in Griggsville, Mount Sterling, and Pittsfield. Maybe you ask, why choose Farmers National Bank of Griggsville? The answer is simple. Local people, local decisions, and local commitment with local investments. We have many products and services to meet your needs. We invite you to find out more about us. Go to fmbgriggsville.com and explore all the services we offer. Visit any of our three friendly locations in Mount Sterling, Griggsville, and Pittsfield today. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville. Local people helping local people. Member FDI. 
Damon Plumbing, serving all of Pike County and the surrounding area with quality residential and commercial plumbing services. Damon Plumbing offers septic installation, drain cleaning, new water lines, remodel work for your home, or if you're planning a new build, make sure you include the Damon Boys. To get it right the first time, no job too big. Have you seen Brayton and Doug? Or too small? Sorry, Corby, couldn't resist. Call Brayton at 217-491-5415 or Doug at 217-617-2318. Damon Plumbing, recommended by our family for your family. Welcome to Douglas Automotive and Tire, your expert trek and car repair center in Pittsfield, Illinois. We provide full service from oil changes to new tires and everything in between. Contact us today to schedule service. We're located at 303 West Jefferson Street in Pittsfield, Illinois. Call 217-922-0064. That's 217-922-0064. Britain and the gang know cars, and if you need repairs, call Douglas Automotive today for all your repairs. Jersey's world, Jersey's world, party time, excellent, blue, party on James, party on Todd. Jersey's Bar and Grill in Camp Point, where you can find the best burgers, sandwiches, and steaks, all locally sourced from GJY Beef Company. We love beer. We love beer. Ice cold draft beer. Enjoy one of our many craft selections on the patio. All at Jersey's Bar and Grill, 109 East Jefferson, Camp Point, Illinois. Welcome back to the Little Jess Motors Halftime Show. Little Jess Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram at 34, 31 Main Street. Quincy, Illinois, the place to go for your next car buying purchase. Their staff is committed to making the process simple and making sure each customer's needs are met. Learn more at littlejessmotor.com or stop by and see them across from Quincy High School in Quincy, Illinois. A one-point lead for the Sockeys over the Blue Jays at halftime and for the rest of your halftime stats. Here's Justin Port. For the Blue Jays, Shooting 50% uh, from the field. They're 7 for 14, two point range, and two for four from three point. They're shooting four from seven from free throws. Our scores are Jack Carrick that has one point, um, Clayton Hoke, who has two points, Levi Hoagland, who has five points, Ethan Mahoney, who has two, and their leading scorer is number four, Griffin McClure, who has 14 points. For the Sockies, Sockies for the half shot 50% from two point range, uh, five of 10, and um, shot 33% from three point with uh, two for six. They were 100% from the line, shooting six to six. Saki scores include Eli Mendenhall, who has uh, seven points, is perfect from the line, and uh, Taylor Graham, who has four points, and Brendan Tomey with a three. Uh, Connor Allen leads soccer scoring with 11, and also has nine rebounds, eight defensive rebounds, one offensive rebound. And that is pretty much it for scoring. It is 25-24, Pittsville on top of Port at the halftime break. We get sent for second half action after this timeout of the Little Jess Motors Halftime Show. United Community Bank has been serving our community in banking since 1973 and is a proud member of the Pittsfield Strong United Community. UCB brings you the latest banking technology, security, and convenience you expect. Delivered with friendly local service you deserve from your community bank. UCB invites you to stop in for a visit at number one professional plaza in Pittsfield or you can find them online at ucbbank.com. United Community Bank, the leader of community banking, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Sign up for a Saki Rewards debit card sports families come check out central valley sports the new facility in town located three miles south of winchester at 520 winchester glasgow road batting cages pitching mounds pitching machines and more open to all ages and skill levels the facility is available for team rental individual membership and family memberships be sure to check out the central valley sports facebook page for more information and stay up to date on individual lessons and camps offered throughout the year. You're getting thirsty, bold, refreshing. So good. <clears throat> I mean, dude. 
Today's halftime show is brought to you by Little Jess Motor Company in Quincy, Illinois. We'd like to introduce you to the brand new 2024 Dodge Hornet GT all-wheel drive offered at 32325. The 2024 Dodge Hornet pays homage to the iconic legacy of Dodge performance. The Hornet GT comes equipped with a 2.0 Hurricane 4 turbo engine that boasts up to 268 horsepower, making it the most powerful compact utility vehicle on the market. Stop by Little Jess today and take this eye-catching CUV powerhouse for a spin. Back to live action to the start, period number three. It's the Florida Blue Jays trailing Pittsfield by one, but with the basketball on the attack to start this third quarter. And they find Glyph Glyph Griffin McClure, easy for me to say. Here's three-point shots, no good with the ball knocked out of bounds. So a second chance opportunity here for the Blue Jays as we start this third quarter. Right in front of us on the stage. Bounce pass, close to five. Lobbed in out front to Mahoney. He'll get it top of the key to Hoagland. Hoagland attacks, Ooh, and yeah. I thought he got away with traveling, but he did not. Turnover on the Blue Jays, just their fourth. They really took pretty good yeah. care of it in the first half. Yes, they did. They did a really good job taking care of the ball. Petty brings it across for the Sockies. He, Tom Have, Mendenhall, Grattan, and Allen, the five, to start the second half for Pittsfield. Grant gets it on the wing left side. Gets it to Tommy about top. Looking down low to Mendenhall. Good catch and fine there. And he'll put it up and in for another two. Eli Mendenhall with another bucket. And Pittsfield's two senior bigs in Allen and Mendenhall both having good nights tonight. Carrick into the front court. 7-11 to play in the third on the PCRE scoreboard. It's 27-24 Pittsfield. Carrick McClure, Marr, Hoagland, and Mahoney, the five for the Jays. Pass on the wing goes to McClure. Picks it up at the free throw line, but they'll say he traveled. And now back-to-back -back turnovers by Porta in nearly as many in the first minute and two seconds of the third as they had in the whole first half. And really, neither one of them forced turnovers, I wouldn't call them. Kind of just little mistakes. Petty brings it into the front court for the Sox. To Mendenhall on the right side. He'll put it on the deck now, find Grattan top of the key to Petty. Right back to Grattan, trying to turn the corner. Tom Ave, good look, three ball, right side, knocks it down. Tom Ave from downtown, and Pittsfield ties their biggest lead of the contest, the six-point lead. Carrick across to McClure. He has 14 of his team's 24 points. Hoagland gets it on the corner. Out to Mahoney, over to Carrick. Looking for Hoagland down low, hangs in the air, shot too hard, and the rebound down to Mendenhall. Tom Haven to the front court. Corner to Grant. Now Mendenhall right back to Grant on a little handoff play. Grant now on a little floater. His runner is up and nothing but the bottom of the net. And Pittsfield starts the second half on a 7 0 run. An Adams Fiber timeout for top notch computer local sales and service. Call Adams Experts 217 214 3423. GSI grain bins are built using the highest strength steel available. This allows you to store more grain to maximize your profitability and efficiency. Buy one now and receive our winter discount program. Make sure Lumber Company, your GSI grain bin dealer. You're getting thirsty, bold, refreshing. So good. <clears throat> I mean, dude. Is predator hunting your thing? Game Masters has you covered. We have way more than just deer and turkey hunting gear, safes, clothes, and gifts. Come check out our predator guns, calls, decoys, lights, traps, binoculars, bipods, tripods, and shooting sticks. Don't forget your thermal and night vision, rifle scopes, trapping equipment, and supplies. Whether your next game pursuit is big or small, runs or flies, Game Masters has what you need to get the job done. We're passionate about the outdoors. Porta took the timeout. They have the basketballs. We're back to live action here after Pittsfield started the half on a 7-0 run. Blue Jays looking to settle back in and take a little better care of the basketball here. Carrick with it on the right wing. Finds Marr in the corner. Looks down low. Ball stolen away by Allen. Third turnover as many trips by the Blue Jays in this third period. Petty, quick pass down low. Mendenhall goes to work in the paint. Shot blocked. No, a foul called on. Mahoney and Mendenhall will go to the free throw line. As Mahoney whistled for his 
first foul of the second half, first team foul, and Mendenhall to the charity stripe for the Sockies with 5.36 to play in the third period. They have their biggest lead of the game right now, and they missed their first free throw of the night. Waters Concrete, Tim Waters and crew, they offer quality concrete for your new build, driveways, decorative, patio, sidewalks, it's anything with concrete, Waters Concrete, ready to serve you, 309-252-1052. Mendenhall makes the adjustment and makes the second, it's a nine-point Saki lead. Petty sits down as Graham is back in for Pittsfield. Eight zero round to start the second half, and as we told you, their biggest lead of the contest on this PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard. McClure with it into the front court on the wing left side. He wants a screen from Mahoney out there. Goes to work off the dribble. Got the matchup he wanted against Mendenhall. Mendenhall, pretty good job staying in front of him. Now the ball comes on the right wing to Carrick. Carrick drives free throw line, bounces in the paint, ball batted around, picked up by Hoagland. Can't get it to go on a good look, and the rebound to. Connor Allen. Give him 10. He's got the double double secured. Allen to Tom Hay. Tries to drive inside against the smaller guard. Left hand runner, no good, but he tips it oh. up and in. 4 2. And Tom Have now with 8. And it makes it 35 24. An 11 point lead. Carrick free into the front court. Works it in the corner to Hoagland. Top of the key now, Marr. They could use Marr to get going a little bit offensively to take some of that. Pressure off of McClure. Marr on the dribble drive. Up and under move. Good take to the hoop that time by that young man. And Marr's got his first bucket of the contest. And stops the Pittsfield run that started the third quarter. 10-0. 424 to play in the third. Good ball fake that time. Got uh, Eli to lean the other way. And Marr's a crafty player for sure. Gratton with it on the wing left side. Out top, Mendenhall. Reverses over to Graham. Or Graham, excuse me. Now to Tom Hay. Feeling it from downtown. It's off the mark. Rebound. They'll call Eli Mendenhall over the back. So Mendenhall will be whistled for his first. First team foul as Barrett Morse is back in for the Blue Jays. He sits down. Hoagland. Mendenhall will take a chair as Ethan Gratton is in for the Sockies. 4-0-3 to play in the third in a nine-point contest. And... The Blue Jays have it linked to the court to go. A little loose man, full court pressure here. As Marr looks to bring it across, gets by his man. Now pulls it back out front. Bounce pass to Mahoney at the free throw line. Turns and faces. Hands it off to McClure. McClure looks for the opening down low. Morse. Morse with a tough turnaround shot. It's well short, but a hustling rebound. Jet Carrick. And he'll get the reverse layup up and in for two. Carrick with the bucket and makes it a 35-28 score now. Little 4-0 burst by the Blue Jays after they trail by 11. Gratton, that's Ethan Gratton with it. To his younger brother, Hayden Gratton. Looks down low now. Graham gets it at the free throw line to Tom Hay. Looks for the open man. There's Ethan Gratton as they run the play they call Texas, and he'll put it up and in for two. Ethan Gratton with his first bucket. And with three minutes to play in the third, makes it a nine-point game. McClure, pull-up jump shot, runner won't go. Gets his own rebound, though. Puts it back up, no good. And the rebound to Connor Allen. Tom Have across for the Sockies. Allen with a bunch of boards in this game. What, 11 now? Yeah, 11, 11 rebounds, 10 defensive. He is uh, playing well for the Sockies tonight. Gratton with it. Could take a dribble and does to break the five count. Now Tom Ave finds Allen out on the wing. They run the flex offense. Ethan Gratton now to Graham. Patient offensively as Pittsfield. Now a dangerous pass. It's stolen away by McClure. McClure on the runner. Shot is up and good at the Larson and the layup. Griffin McClure. And it makes it 37-30. And Adams Network timeout taken here by the Sockies. For fast, reliable internet that doesn't buffer, no matter what life throws at you, it's Adams Fiber. Visit followthefiber.net. Go Team Go! Great Rivers Bank has a digital banking app worth cheering for. Move your money, pay your bills, deposit your checks. Hooray! Hooray! Set up a budget, manage your debit card, set up account alerts, and so much more. 
Our digital banking will give you a reason to stand up and cheer for banking. Learn more at greatriversbank.bank. Great Rivers Bank is an equal housing lender. Member FDIC. 212 to play in the third. 37-30 is the Pittsfield advantage on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard. PCRE Real Estate and Auction for your next sale or buy of a, a purchase. How about a buy? You can buy it, but they would call it a purchase. Of a hunting ground, maybe a new home, some commercial property, they can help you. PCRErealestate.com. A little full court pressure here by the Blue Jays for the first time tonight as Petty's got the basketball across the half court line. Works it over to Allen on the wing. He'll dribble toward the top of the key. Look back door to Tom. It wasn't open. Out of Petty. Looks down low, Mindenhall. Back out top, Tom with a minute 52 to play in the third. It's for the seven point lead. They've led by as many as 11 here in the second half. Mendenhall to Allen. Back to Mendenhall. Goes to work against the sophomore Hoke. Stands his ground, but gives up the offensive rebound. And Eli Mendenhall with the board and the put back. Back to that nine point game. Good initial first stop that time by Hoke, but gave up that second chance opportunity. And Mendenhall was able to capitalize. Puts him in double digits to scoring, too. He's got 11. Here's McClure, works it left side, Carrick for three, a big shot, Carrick knocks it down, and they'll say he's fouled, so he'll go to the free throw line for a four-point play opportunity. Referee says count the basket, and the foul whistled against Javen Petty for the Sockies. And Carrick to the free throw line as Petty picks up his second foul, and the second foul of the half by Pittsfield, as you see, Petty didn't give him much room to land there, and that will be called for the foul. Carrick trying to complete the four-point play, and it's up and good. Cuts it out of a five-point game. Big time shot by the sophomore, Jet Carrick. He now has it. Gratton with it left side. Out top to Petty. Petty trying to three. It's not close. Out of bounds on the air ball, and Nichols back into the game. He'll sit down. Allen now. 101 to play in the third, and Porta with a chance to cut it even closer. Trail by 11, only by five at the moment. Into the front court, Marr has it on the right side. Tries to dribble against now Mindenhall as a Saki switch off defensively. Marr wants to try to go to work against Mindenhall. Drives inside, Mindenhall, pretty good defense. Marr up and under, no good. Oak with a weak side rebound, won't fall, but he's fouled, and he'll shoot two shots as the Sockies did not box out. Foul will be called on Nichols. It's his first, team third, and Hoak to the free throw line to shoot a pair. 35.4 seconds to play in the third, and the sophomore Hoak to shoot two. First one on the way is good. Into the game for the first time of the night. Keegan Dale, the 5'8 senior for Portis. It's Marr down. Pittsfield brings Allen back in, replacing Nichols. And Hoke trying to make it a successful trip on both free throws. Second one up is also good. He's 4 for 4 on the lead. And cuts it down to a three-point game. Kind of looked like Pittsfield was going to pull away in this one when they led by 11. But it's just a three-point contest now in the last 23 seconds of this third quarter. Porta not going away. Grant with it on the holdout front with 15 seconds to play in the third. Finds Petty. Petty toward the right wing off the dribble. Looks for Tom Abe coming around the corner. Turnaround shot on a fadeaway, and Tom Abe gets it to go. Three seconds, two, half-court shot. McClure at the buzzer, no good. And the third quarter has come to a close. It's Pittsfield 41, 4 to 36 after three. We'll have action for you in the fourth after this. Grab the game while your kids are busy. You know, streaming, gaming, and homework. Now you can teach your kids the value of a dollar by showing bundles with Cascom. Bundle telephone, internet, and TV. Bundle two for a double play or three for a triple play. Plus, save $20 a month for three months for a limited time. Then you can tell everyone how you help them with their math homework. Call Cascom about bundles today at 1-800-252-1799. 
CASCOM at 1-800-252-1799. Best Systems Insulators offer insulation for homes and commercial buildings throughout central Illinois and the surrounding areas. We take great care to ensure that the insulation products we use are the best fit for our clients and their project. We understand that different buildings have different needs and that each of our clients has a unique set of goals. Let us work with you to find the best solution for your next project. Call Best Systems Insulators at 217-285-6005. That's 285-6005. Or visit them online at gobestsystems.com. Ready to start quarter number four. Pittsfield led 25-24 after the half, so they head into the fourth with a six-point lead, but at one point in the quarter led by 11. Called a five-point lead, in fact. I can math. Math is hard at times. Sockies will have the basketball to begin the final period. Graham brings it toward the front court. Picks it up top of the key. Gets it to Allen. Allen, Tommy Graham, Mendenhall, and Granton, the five to start this fourth quarter for Pittsfield. Ball gets reversed on the right side to Grant. Looks down low. Wasn't open now. Pushes Mendenhall through. Out by the volleyball spike line to Tom Have. Over to Connor Allen, who's had one of his bigger nights of the season here tonight on both ends. Oh. Here's Graham now gets open to Tom Have, or excuse me, to Allen, right back to him. Wow. Tough pass. Tough pass. Probably had the lane there. Tom Ave now gets bumped around a bit. Gratton gets it. Good pass off the knee there. Yeah. It's not but a pretty uh, start to the third. Here's Tom Ave. He'll try the drive inside. Jump stop. Puts it up. Shot no good. Foul. And he'll shoot two shots. Foul on the Blue Jays is their first to the fourth. And individually, this one is whistled on Hoke. Clayton Hoke's first. Team first. And Tom Ave to the charity stripe for the Sockies. His first is up and good. Lana Express, walk in medical care when you need it for patients ages 18 months and older. Located now on the main campus of Illini Community Hospital, 640 West Washington, IlliniHospital.org. Tom may make them both. Is he the third man in double figures? Uh, yes, I guess him 12. And makes it a seven-point Saki lead. Blue Jays start the final quarter with Carrick, McClure, Marr, Morse, and Hoke. Hoke over to McClure. Had the big first half, but was quiet there in the third quarter. Really, I can only remember two shots coming from him. And one was that one right at the buzzer on a half quarter. Here's a pass down to Hoke. Good, strong catch. Too strong on the shot. Rebound tipped around. And it is finally secured by Mendenhall. Tom Abe will walk it up for the Sockies with 6.25 to play in this contest. Right side, Grant. Over to Allen on the left wing. Tries the dribble drive to Graham. It's Brad Tom Abe tells his squad to be patient. Gratton with it. To Allen. 6.05 left. Bounce pass Graham with Carrick right up on him. Knocks it away, but... Run down. Now, Gratton tries to dribble between two men. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll allow Mahoney to check back in for Porta. Hoke sits down. Pittsfield returns Petty to action as Graham will take a chair. 5.57 to play in this contest. Pittsfield ball underneath their own hoop. Ball will come to the corner in Tom Hay. Petty now. Now get the ball back to the same wing. Hooked up. Gratton with the touch. Still trying to add on to the seven-point lead on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard with now 535 to play. Tom, a bounce pass. Gets it back on the give and go. Runner up no good. Gets his own rebound. Now the ball knocked free. A tie up here. We should go the way of Porta. They'll say they actually called the timeout. So no change the possession error and Porta gets the Adams Fiber timeout. 524 left in this one. It's Pittsfield 43, Porta 36. Every day, banks touch every corner of our lives. They support us when we turn life's goals into accomplishments. Goals like opening a small business, buying a home, planting a crop, having a baby. From your first car to life after retirement, Central State Bank is there for all of your life's milestones. 
CSB is central to your banking needs. Visit us in Clayton, Kinderhook, Pittsfield, Pleasant Hill, and Quincy or at CSB123.com. Central State Bank wishes all of the teams well on the hardwood this week. 524 left in this one on the Adams Fiber timeout by the Porta AC Blue Jays. They'll have two timeouts remaining. Follow the fiber.net. Speeds up to one gigabit. Wi-Fi 6 internet. I will not buffer. You've got work to do, or if you're trying to stream your favorite show or movie, follow the fiber.net. Porta basketball, length of the court to go. Down by seven for this Blue Jays squad. As Marr will bring it up against Grant. Or is it to the front court? That's Carrick. Attacks now, pulls it on the perimeter. To Marr near the half court line. Marr, the junior, is going to be called for traveling. Seven turnovers. Established the right foot as the pivot foot, then switched to the left and is called for the drag as somebody jumped the passing lane there. And that's why he was called for that one. A chance for Pittsfield to add on to their seven-point lead here. Tomei brings it toward the front court against Marr. Near the sideline ground. He'll hand it off to Tom Hay. Free throw line. Mendenhall. Attacks down low and double dribbles. Or travels. Whatever you want to call it. It's a turnover on Pittsfield, and they've had Ten. quite a few. Ten is only Ten. the first of the That's second half. That's the first of the second half. Well, I was trying to say they had a lot in the first half. And they did. I mean, that's if I can count. Well, or, which is. Or marked them all down. Questionable at best. Here's McClure for another two, and you better start counting on him again as he's got another bucket in. 18 cuts it down. points. Yeah, 18 of his team's 38. And cuts it down to a five-point game. Patty into the front court with 429 left. Gets it on the left side to Grant. Pass tip, but Allen secured it. Then he traps. Travel. And a turnover on the Sockies. Their second as many trips down the court. And allowing Porta to cut the lead to maybe a single possession game with a made bucket here. Porta team just won't go away. Yeah, they refuse to quit for sure after trailing by 11 in the third. Here's McClure. Good move. He's got another two. He's got 20. And an and one opportunity here could cut it down to a one point game. Connor Allen called for the foul. It's his first. First and the team first. And watch this finish by McClure. The crafty junior with another two. Could cut it down to a two point game with just over four minutes to play. And the free throw is good. 21 on the night for Griffin McClure. Inbounds pass to Mindenhall. Now Petty. With four minutes to play, Pittsfield clinging to a two-point lead. Tom Hayes, as Port has really turned up the defensive pressure, and Brad Tom Hayes wants the timeout. 3.53 left, 43-41. Pittsfield with the two-point lead after the timeout on the Adams Fiber timeout on Central Illinois Sports. Kate Marable, real estate broker with Hometown Real Estate, would like to say good luck to all area teams and hopes everyone has a successful and healthy season. When you're in the market for a new home or would like to sell your home, be sure to call Kate Marable. Kate is a lifelong resident of the area and has experience in first-time home buyers, FHA, USDA, and VA loans. Call Kate Marable at 217-370-9809. That's 370-9809 for Kate Marable and Hometown Real Estate. I love training. I like to help people improve on their tasks. That food has been providing everything for me. They just treat you so well. When my life needed an opportunity, I chose that. You're getting thirsty, bold, refreshing. So good. <clears throat> I mean, dude. Timeout was taken by Pittsfield. They have three timeouts remaining in this contest, but their lead has been whittled down to just a two-point advantage with 3.53 to play. Inbounds pass to Mendenhall. Over to Tom Abe on the left wing. That's it, the uh, 
near the half court line. Long bounce pass, run down by Gratton and fouled by Carrick because he was just a half second late. Had he been there half second earlier, he would have had a steal and a layup to tie the game. As it is, though, his first, team second, and ball out of bounds near their own bench for the Sockies. As Allen will be the man to throw it in. Allen, the senior, gets it to Tom Have. Hands it off to Grattan, who's on the dribble out front. Over to Tom Abe, top of the key, Allen, reverse to Grattan left side, 3.30 to play. Pittsfield led in this contest, 35 to 24 was their biggest lead of the ball game. They've given up 17 and have scored eight since that point. Tom Abe on the dribble drive in against Marr and a foul called here on the floor. On Marr, he'll pick up his third and the third team foul. Ball to bounce underneath here for the Sockies. Petty looking here, looking close to five, gets it to Mendenhall left side. He'll dribble it out front. And the foul going to be called on Mahoney now. Will be the fourth team foul and Mahoney's second of the game and ball out on the sideline again for Pittsfield. 3.06 left. I'm shooting from here on out. I don't mind that strategy if you're Porta. Maybe put Pittsfield at the line. They've been good there tonight, but on the season have not been, has not been a strong suit. I'm not sure that that's exactly what they're going for by the coach's reaction. <laughs> Maybe not. Here's Gratton as a ball knocked away, stolen away. The Blue Jays with a chance to tie or take the lead with 2.46 left. Carrick over to Mahoney on the wing, left side. Gets it to Morse, looks back door. Ball knocked out of bounds, last touch by Marr. And out of bounds to the Sockies, length of the court to go. Right idea, but a good recovery by Brennan Tomhave defensively. As Graham is back in, Gratton sits down for Pittsfield. Length of the court to go for the Sockies with still 2.37 left. A lot of time left in this game. Petty brings it into the front court. Guarded hard by McClure. Out front, bounce pass goes to Allen. Wide pass to Minden, all able to corral it, though. Now to Graham, who nearly stole one away. Pass to Allen. Allen at the long step. Shot no good. Rebound put back is good by Mindenhall. And it makes it 45-41 with 2-10 remaining. 13 points and six rebounds for Eli Mindenhall tonight. Big put back there. McClure tries to go to work against Tom Haven. He'll be called for the reach. He'll pick up his third and the second team foul of the fourth quarter by the Saki. Small to bounce on the baseline for McClure to throw in for the Blue Jays. It's the ball to Mahoney on the wing. Knocked away by Mindenhall. Mahoney gets it back. Puts it on the deck. Finds Carrick in the lane. Shot is good and he's fouled. He'll have a chance to cut it down to one. He actually had some trouble with the catch on the play. Graham going to be called for the foul, I believe. And he will. Team third on the Sockies and Carrick to the free throw line. Trying to cut it to a one-point game with under two minutes remaining, and Carrick's free throw is good. Rattles it in. Pittsfield will get a substitute into the contest, and Gratton as Graham sits down. 45-44, 154 left. Blue Jays trying to come all the way back in this one after trailing by 11 in the third. Tom Have brings it into the front court. Out top to Mendenhall. Gets it free throw line, Allen. Bounce pass to Gratton. Poked away by the quick hands of Carrick, but Gratton runs it down. He'll put it on the dribble now. Over to Allen now, Petty with 1.30 to play. It's field with the flex offense. Carrick with a foul, and he'll send Gratton to the free throw line to shoot two. As it's the fifth team foul on the Blue Jays here in the fourth quarter. And for Jet Carrick, it is his second. Hayden Gratton, the sophomore to the free throw line to shoot a pair for the Sockies as they lead by one. 
First one up is off to the right, no good. Bowlers Universe open Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Fridays until midnight, Saturdays 4 to midnight. They offer a great menu, burgers and fries, specialty pizzas, and daily lunch specials at Bowlers Universe in Pittsfield. Trying to expand the lead to two, and Grant able to do that with the second to make it 46-44, 125 left. Carrick into the front court for the Jays. Ball handoff goes to McClure, now back to Carrick deep in the corner. Puts it on the deck against Mendenhall. Trying to create. Now to McClure with the behind the back to Carrick top of the key. He'll drive a little up and under. Blocked by Mendenhall, but they'll call the foul here as he got him with the body. And two free throws for Carrick to try to tie the game here. That was the right call there. Yeah, I think he definitely he got up with the block up top, but the body down low and a good call there as you saw in the Northwestern Mutual instant replay. And Carrick to the free throw line with 108 left in this contest. His first one is up and short. No good. Here's Morse back into the game. He will replace Hoagland. Now Carrick trying to just cut it to one with the second free throw here. Jet is the 5'9 sophomore. Second one too hard. And Connor out with yet another rebound. To Grattan. Tom Have gets it now with a minute to play in this contest. Petty gets it near the sideline left side. Pittsfield with a two point lead in the basketball. Out top, Mendenhall. Works it over on the wing to Hayden Grattan. To Petty top of the key. Just a two point game, so no reason to foul this early if you're Porter. You can be a little chancy though and go for a steal. Instead, Chet Carrick will be called for the foul. It's his third. And he'll send Grattan back to the free throw line to shoot two. With 41.9 seconds left. And Grattan, the sophomore for the Sockies to the free throw line. A lot of youngsters in this contest for Porter. And a couple for Pittsfield and sophomores and Graham and Grattan that have played quite a bit. First one by Grattan is up and good to make it a two possession game with a make here. The Pine County Express, hey, pick them up each Wednesday at a newsstand near you. They are your local family owned newspaper delivering all the good news the Pine County and the area has to offer at the Pike County Express. And we have an inadvertent whistle here with 41.9 seconds to play. So they'll re-administer the ball to Grattan. This is the test. We're just making sure the whistle still worked. Smart, smart play. Don't want it to not work in a time of need. Grattan not faced by that. And we'll get a timeout now by Stephen Price. 41.9 seconds left. Pittsfield 48, Porta 44 on this Adams Network timeout. I'm Chris Nichols with PCRE Real Estate and Auction here in Pittsfield. For 15 years now, I've been specializing in selling farmland and hunting properties, along with homes and commercial real estate. Whether it's helping a seller get a premium price out of their home or assisting a buyer to find the farm of their dreams, I pride myself on providing elite customer service. Give me a call today at 217-473-3777 if I can help with any of your real estate needs. Or feel free to jump on our website at pcrerealestate.com. Make your dream kitchen and bath a reality with help from Pike County Lumber. We'll create a design to fit your lifestyle and your needs. Quartz countertops, quality onyx that offers dozens of colors. From start to finish, trust the knowledge and experience at Pike County Lumber. Hey, West Central Illinois, are you looking for a great deal on a vehicle? Well, at West Town Ford, we have a lot full of vehicles. Cars, trucks, vans, SUVs. We've got them all, and a lot of them, at West Town Ford in Jacksonville. The Board of Blue Jays take the timeout. They've got one remaining, trailing with 41.9 seconds to play by a four-point score. Blue Jays will have McClure in the backcourt. Brings it across. He's got 21 on the night. Tamar. Looks down low, nothing open here. Now tries to go to Mahoney, ball knocked free, out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Blue Jays. 29.2 seconds left. Good defense by Minden all the time. Get a hand in there. Marr to throw it in underneath, gets it to Mahoney on the sideline. Now to McClure, drives in, runner up is in and out, no good, rebound to Connor Allen. Gets it to Tom Haven. He'll be fouled as he's poked in the eye with 
one seconds remaining, and Tom Abe to shoot two. Foul on Marr is his fourth. And two shots for the senior, Brennan Tomhave. Can only still make it a two-possession game, but six points is much different than four. Saki still have a foul to give, too. Yeah. First one up, no good. Here's McKinney back in. He's a good three-point shooter for this squad. He'll sit down. Hoagland. Blue Jays have one timeout at their disposal. Don't want to use it until they get a made basket. Tom Abe second, missed them both. Rebound to Connor Allen, who puts it up, can't get it to go. Rebound to Connor Allen again. He and Mahoney then are tied up, and it's a jump ball, and it'll head the way of the Blue Jays. Well, that took time off the clock. 16.2 seconds remaining, four-point contest. 48-44 the score. Those two rebounds give Connor Allen 15 on the night. Yeah, he's been a man in the on a mission for the boards this evening. Marr brings it toward the front court with 13 seconds. Has to hurry. Free throw, or excuse me, volleyball line three is up and good by Marr. He makes it from deep and makes it a 48-47 game as the Blue Jays call their final timeout on the Adams Fiber timeout. Adams Fiber and Adams Expert are timeout. Sponsor here for Top Notch Local Computer Sales and Service. Call Adams Experts, 217-214-3423. Check out this deep three from Drew Marr just inside the volleyball spike line and has made this a one-point game as the Sockies failed to make free throws. As Tom Abe, their best free throw shooter on the season, missed both. This is just a one-point game. Even if the Sockies get it in and get fouled and make both free throws, it's still just a three-point contest, and that's a lot of ifs in there before that would happen. So the Blue Jays have to feel pretty good about things right now. First of all, you're going to try to get a steal on the inbounds play. Now, Porte is out of timeout, so they're going to have to get it and go no matter what happens here. You're, yeah, you got to think you're going to foul right as soon as the ball gets inbounded. Try to get that steal, maybe try to swat it away. So it might not be immediately, but with... 9.8 seconds, there's not a lot of time to do much of anything. As the Sockies can run the baseline here, Petty will be the man to throw it in for Pittsfield. And he'll get the ball from the official. Inbounds pass comes to Gratton. Gratton will dribble away no from call. the man. No foul call. Now Carrick puts both hands in his back and... He'll be called for that one. Quite honestly, if you really wanted to, you could have called that an intentional foul as there wasn't any kind of an attempt at the ball on that one as Carrick whistled for his fourth. And Hayden Gratton to the free throw line trying to shoot two with 7.3 seconds remaining. Blue Jays are out of timeouts, so if you're Pittsfield, you wow. would not, I would not believe, take a timeout here even if he makes them both. First one up is good. As here's... Mahoney back into the game. Dale sits down for the chase. Marr returns as Morse takes the chair. Two-point contest, 49-47. I think Brad Tommy just said he'd like a timeout if it goes here, which does surprise me as that would give Porta a chance to set up a play here. Free throw is no good. Rebound loose, run down by Carrick, and here we go. Five seconds left. Carrick on the run into the front court. Runner-up scoop shot is no good, but he's Ooh. fouled. And he'll shoot two shots with a chance to tie the game. A chance to tie the game here is this foul called on Eli Mendenhall. It's the fifth foul for the Sockies. And with, I think that says 1.5 seconds left, Jet Carrick to shoot two. And a chance to tie this contest up at 49 points apiece. First one on the way by Carrick is no good. Now Pittsburgh would like to call a timeout. And they'll take the full timeout variety on the Adams Network timeout. 1.5 seconds left. Pittsville leads by two. Back after this. Loading the kids in the car. Brokering peace in the back seat. Mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple so you can worry about more important things like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. 
Contact your local auto owner's agents at BNP Insurance Agency, Barber Agency. See Pat Vandevelde, Caleb Vandevelde, or Mary Coltis. They'll find our location at 114 South Madison Street in Pittsfield. 1.5 seconds left in this contest. Pittsfield took the Adams Network timeout. Follow the fiber.net to learn more about the internet offerings from Adams Fiber. 49-47 is the lead for the Sockies. Jet Carrick will be at the free throw line to shoot the second of a two-shot foul. He missed the first. So you would assume the Blue Jays will try to intentionally miss this shot and look for a tip-in to try to tie it up. They have Hoke and Hoagland both in the game. And if you're Pittsfield, you would know that as well, so you have to make sure that you have your best guys underneath the box out, and they'll put Allen on one side. Mendenhall on the other, and you don't want to forget about the shooter. As Carrick will now scoot all the way to the left side of the free throw line. Trying to, get trying to miss this one. Trying to get more a good, good angle to the basket here. His free throw is up. It is off the iron. No good. Rebound put back. Oak is no good as he had a shot at it at the buzzer. And Pittsfield escapes with a two-point victory. 49-47. And how close was that one? Oak had the rebound and the putback, as you'll see here on the Northwestern Mutual replay. Carrick misses it, takes a high bounce, and Hoke had a chance at it. Just could not get it to fall through, and although Porta fought back from 11 down and made it interesting, Pittsfield wins this one, 49-47. Blue Jays fall to 11-11. Pittsfield moves to 15-6, and, and we take you to the Blessing Health System postgame show with final stats and a visit with Saki head coach Brad Tomave next. The heart is the hardest working muscle in your body. If something goes wrong with it, you need a medical team that works just as hard. You need Blessing Health's Open Heart Surgery Team, celebrating 20 years of delivering life-saving care to tri-state residents. Patients and families choose Blessing Health's Open Heart Surgery Team for its experience, quality, and heartwarming compassion. Get the most out of your hardworking heart. Griffin Signs in Time at 122 South 9th Street in Quincy is a full-service sign company that can complete any project, from fully wrapping your entire fleet of vehicles, digital signs, storefronts, to creating small banners and signs. The right and professional signage is the difference of getting the job, heading folks in the correct direction to find you, or creating a brand recognition for potential customers. Put the right signs in your customer's mind with Griffin Signs in Time. Call 217-228-7470. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You've heard that phrase many times in Rod Prentice in Pittsfield. Your State Farm agent is the guy you can count on to be your friend and neighbor in the insurance business. He has a complete line of insurance available for you from State Farm Insurance. You can reach him at 217-285-6930. Our family trusts Rod Prentice with all of our insurance needs. Stop by their office on Washington Street and see the girls in Rod Prentice, your State Farm agent, 217-285-6930. I'm Chris Nichols with PCRE Real Estate and Auction here in Pittsfield. For 15 years now, I've been specializing in selling farmland and hunting properties along with homes and commercial real estate. Whether it's helping a seller get a premium price out of their home or assisting a buyer to find the farm of their dreams, I pride myself on providing elite customer service. Give me a call today at 217-473-3777 if I can help with any of your real estate needs. Or feel free to jump on our website at pcrerealestate.com. I have to speak to you about something that is uh, concerning me. Heard you and your mother talking about this Arlo fella. You're dating someone? Yeah. Dad, Arlo's the name of the new security cameras that we got from our service provider. Mm. Arlo's not a boy. Oh, boy. Ah, uh, not a boy. Apparently, we just learned that it's a camera named after a boy why don't you name it peter welcome back on the blessing health system post game show final on this one a 49 47 win for the pittsfield sockies over the port of ac blue jays as pittsfield picks up their 15th win of the season but by the skin of their teeth in this contest after an 11 point lead in the third quarter cut it down to all the way to one and win this one even though they gave up Game time potential shots three times in the last 20 seconds of the game. They win this one 49 to 47. Have to give the 
Port of Blue Jays, uh, Port AC Blue Jays, a lot of credit in this one as they fought back into the contest after that 11-point deficit in the ball game. And uh, Pittsfield kind of lucky to escape with the victory in this contest for the Blue Jays in the ball game. Leading scorer was Griffin McClure with 21 points, 10 for Jet Carrick. Those all came. Well, nine of those ten came in the second half. Four for Clayton Hoke. Levi Hoagland finished with five. Andrew Marr with eight points for Port AC Central. Blue Jays finished the contest with 47 points. For the Sockies, they were led in scoring by Eli Mendenhall, 13 points to go along with six rebounds. The seventh one would have made it a little less interesting right there at the end. Brennan Tommy with 12 Nine of those came in the second half, and Connor Allen with 11 points and 15 rebounds in the win for the Sockies. We'll pause for a timeout, visit with Saki head coach Brad Tomhave next. From bag to field to bin, Prairie Land FS is your home for quality seed. We treat it right here at one of our local facilities, deliver it right to your farm, and then provide the propane to fuel your bins. Have confidence in what you're putting in your engine with our energy specialist. They're focused on maximizing power, fuel efficiency, and engine protection to keep you going. We're neighbors serving neighbors. Prairie Land FS, your leading supplier of choice. One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Derek Harris is your Pike and Adams County area Edward Jones financial advisor. Derek Harris's most important goals are yours. That's why Derek will take the time to understand your needs so he can recommend personalized strategies with your goals in mind. Contact Derek Harris today at 217 222 7173. Knowing you, that's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Member SIPC. Welcome back on the Blessing Health System post-game show. Final on this one, a 49-47 win for the Pittsfield Sockies over the Porta AC Blue Giants. Visiting with head coach Brad and Tom And, you know, coach, first of all, uh, it's been a tough week for the kids. Um, you know, unfortunately, this is one of those situations that uh, you've had the opportunity to try to navigate a team through a couple of times now, and it never gets any easier with, uh, with the loss of a classmate. Yeah, you know, we had a good talk last night, and, and uh, um, you know, it, whenever you're put in these situations, whether it's a, a kid and, and you're, you're within a team or, or outside of it, even as grown-ups, you know, it, we have a hard time understanding it at times, but uh, um, you really find people that you can lean on, and that's the, uh, the, uh, the togetherness of this team is going to help pull them through some difficult times, uh, you know, that they're going through as a class, and and uh, your heart breaks for them and, and the, the entire school for that matter, not just our basketball team. So, um, no, you know, I told him last night I wish I, had, wish I had certain words to say or things I could do that takes the hurt away, but that's part of it. You know, the grieving process, that's part of it. But it was important for them to, to understand that, that now they're – we talk about supporting each other when we're on the floor, whether it be help side or gap control or making a good cut. They're learning to have to um, to support support their teammates and their classmates in just a little bit different situation, and it's unfair for a a high school kid to have to go through and and have to uh, learn these lessons at such a young age. And unfortunately, you know we've been we've been through it before, and um, um, you hope it never happens, and but unfortunately it did, and. and uh, um, but the main thing is they get a chance to be in 32 minutes, be a kid, and take their mind off all that stuff that they shouldn't have to be going through and, and still relish in the opportunity that they have and, and not to take a playoff. And I think the biggest message that we had in the locker room before was, uh, you know, just that. We've got 32 minutes together to play, to play a game and, um, and show your toughness and, and to take you away from all that stuff for a little bit so, and to have fun you know, and have fun with, compete at the highest level and be intense and be aggressive, but, but have fun. And uh, um, hopefully they can continue to do that. And, and you know, my, my thoughts and prayers are with, with all of them and, and of course, uh, the family and close friends and, and the, school, the school staff. And a chance for, as you said, a little bit of normalcy as you, as you head back to the hard court. And you knew that this Porta AC Central squad is a team that uh, Stephen Price's team has improved so much 
from the first part of the season. I mean, you saw Griffin McClure, kind of a guy that, you know, you don't even know that you talk much about in the first week of the season. The first time you play him, he puts up 21 points tonight. This is a team that, by the way, very young, has really improved. Yeah, yeah, he was he, he was on tonight, and we had a hard time keeping him in front of us, and, and but he got to the got to his scoring spots, and he finished and hit some big shots. So they have improved, and, and – um, um, unfortunately for us, you know, we haven't had much, many reps in the gym over the last two weeks and, and uh, chance for us to do something and, and get better and, and put some uh, tweaks and additions in. You know, we got back in and it's kind of week one of practice. It's, it felt like a little bit. So, um, but yes, they, they're, they're, they've got a, ni- a nice team and they, they played well tonight and we had it within 10 or we had it up to 10 a couple times, I believe, and then just kind of... Um, kind of did us for a second and and next thing you know they, they were right back in the game so um they found a way to win and that's the most important thing the last 20 seconds you maybe not would like to try to give up three different chances to tie the game but hey that's the way it worked out on this yeah. one and you you, you, you kind of you know get away with one every once in a while but i do want to point out you know you get to this time of the season and you kind of usually see seniors start to look a little different uh, they kind of realize that that end of their career is just around the corner. You've only got, I think, maybe eight or nine games guaranteed left on the mm-hmm. schedule this year. Mm-hmm. And Connor Allen has had a little different look about him in this game tonight, finishing with 11 points and 15 rebounds and uh, just really, I mean, controlled the paint for you on this contest. Yeah, and, and I think his focus was not make sure he didn't get two fouls early in the first half and had to sit the rest of the time in that, where he doesn't get in the flow of the game. So he had a big game, 11 and 15. I knew he had a slew of rebounds. Um, but I didn't realize it was that many. So kudos to Connor. That's a that's a big night for him that we need. And now the rest of them just have to make sure that they don't rely on Connor to get the uh, to rebound every time. We still have to have five guys collectively boxing out and going and getting the board. And and uh, uh, but good for him. He he he. I think he owed himself one. I, I don't think he was real happy with how he played uh, uh, or the situation he got in uh, at Rushville. So, um, but yeah, seniors have a different. Uh, different um, um, carry to themselves uh, especially when it's middle of January and they kind of they kind of understand just like what you said that boy this is it's going quick and they want to uh, make sure that they uh, take advantage of all the situations that they they're put in there's plays throughout a game and you probably during the course of the game don't necessarily think about them as they're happening but a a made half court shot to beat a buzzer I think Brendan had a little fade away to end the third on the baseline and a two-point contest both of those plays turned out to be huge yeah, yeah. Every whether it's in the third quarter or the first quarter, you know, it seemed to every every point mattered. Then uh, that's what we try to stress to guys. It, it it's not just uh, when that clock is ticking down in the fourth quarter and you look up and it's tight. Um, we got to have that focus the entire game because what you do in the first quarter has just a big impact as as what you do in the the fourth. So um, executed for the most part. Like to see some free throws, uh, more free throws made to close the game out. And but they didn't. And but they still found a way to win. So that they showed some resiliency. You get a day in the gym tomorrow, and then an opportunity on Saturday against Jerseyville, a very High quality program is always a little bigger program. Uh, they always come into the little physical style of play, and it's, and it's a, another opportunity. And your take a charge against cancer event that's become a really cool opportunity for your program to help to give back to the community. Yeah, certainly. And Scott, Coach Bacon does a great job again. And and we've kind of been put behind the eight ball a little bit uh, with some t-shirt sales and things that we normally been able to do to offer the community and the parents and and the people coming to the games to purchase some of that stuff so hopefully uh, a lot of people come out and support a great cause and and uh you know every dollar that that we can raise to help go to those places uh and so that those those people can provide the care and the uh the treatment that uh that that people are going through such a horrible um horrible sickness uh, have to encounter you know again it's not real fair and uh so we just hope we can give uh, just a little bit and and continue to do that and support what um what so many have gone through and and help out where we can so hopefully we come out and and uh people want to buy a t-shirt uh because uh we've got several left just due to the circumstances of not being able to um be in school or or whatever to to sell those things. So we appreciate all the support of local businesses and the community um, helping us out. So very appreciative. Saki's got their 15th victory of the season, 49-47 over Porter tonight. Coach, as always, we appreciate the time. Thanks, guys. That's Saki head coach Brad Tommy. Time to name our player of the game, presented by Edward Jones Financial Advisor Derek Harris.
Financial investments are important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, parents, and mentors. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones financial advisor, understands this. That's why Derek Harris is a proud sponsor of the player of the game on Central Illinois Sports. And how about a big night from the senior in Connor Allen? 11 points, 15 rebounds to the victory. And the Sockies win this one 49-47. That's going to do it here from AC Central High School for John Hull and Justin Poor. I'm Charlie Hull. Thank you for joining us tonight on another Central Illinois Sports presentation.